Hi Aries, welcome to your February 2022 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. Right when I start talking, this dog decided to start barking. It's pretty funny. Wow, you got some good cards there. So you're hermiting. <laughs> There's really such a word, hermiting. Uh, the heart of the matter is the hermit card, which is connected to Virgo. In case there are any Virgos in your life that we should be speaking about. And um, this is a card of self-inquiry, reflection, contemplation. And solitude so these are words that we don't normally use to describe Aries which tends to be very extroverted and likes to be around other people but not all of you are like that some some of you are more uh, solitary I'm sure but this is not just about that outer solitude that's it's about the inner um stillness i don't know how else to put it so maybe you have been meditating recently maybe you have been putting my selenite right there my heart-shaped selenite maybe you have been taking some kind of spiritual program or whatever and it's brought you into this new place um sometimes this can come about because of marital difficulties you're separated and you're living in a different residence and the the whole idea of that which i think is wonderful is before you decide to part ways you just see if perhaps there are some things that when you separate you can gain clarity on that when you're in the thick of it, it's very easy to get caught up in it, in that. In the past position, we have the Ace of Pentacles. This can be a new job, um, some kind of money, uh, like a windfall of money. Oh, that's what a great idea. What a great thought. <laughs> uh, coming into your life. And as a hermit, boy, that's such a different type of energy because it's so much about, uh, you know, practical matters. Um, but the, but like I said, the hermit can be, cre uh, can be connected to Virgo. So if you have met somebody like this, they may have really stabilized your life in some way. So um, the higher message is the Knight of Wands. And this is a card. Uh, this is what I associate with Aries, the type of energy that Aries is all about, which is very devil may care, very like freewheeling and that kind of thing. And it may feel like you want to... Um, that, that you'll always want to sow your wild oats. But if you can find somebody who makes you or who allows you to be like this and doesn't perceive it as a threat, then perhaps you have found the right person. So the bottom line is that if you have been in a, in a season of feeling like um, you've had to reflect on your life in some way and somebody new comes into your life and it feels really good because um you think that they are helping you to you know your emotions have been all over the place and they're helping you they're very a ground a grounded person um make sure that they can 
accept that part of yourself because I notice that I think that sometimes like um, Aries people attract Cancers or Capricorns and these types of people are going to be very helpful to you to kind of channel your raw talent and everything and you know maybe they take care of the day-to-day -day details in life and you can do your crazy wild stuff but they may not give you that kind of freedom that you need and they may not understand they may see you as irresponsible and all those things that maybe are kind of sort of true to other people who see things differently but it's not going to be you know necessarily a good thing overall so um i think one of the biggest hurdles that Aries people have to kind of jump over is the tendency to be rash, to, to, to want to do things very um, quickly instead of being deliberate. Um, what crosses you is the Fool card. And to me, I associate this with Aries too, even though it's not really that way. But I mean that the absolutely new beginnings, the zero point, and what kind of things do you want to create in your life? And you are going to have a new moon in, on April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, that's interesting, the fool. Yeah, maybe that maybe that is your um, day of um, these new beginnings. Because we have the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles. This is something that we have coming in for you, the Ace of Cups. And... It's, but the timing may not be right. I mean, we're still in, for February, there might still be things that you need to wrap up for the prior season before your solar return, before the, the new moon in your sign. What's coming in is the Ace of Cups, which can be new love and offer coming from the heart. So, yeah, like th that's another thing too, is like, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Cups. You might have like word, have gotten word of a new job, but does it, is it something that you really feel connected to emotionally? That's what the Ace of Cups may suggest. And so, and so rather than just jumping at something, um, you know, make sure that it has, it has like some emotional impact on you and that you can, you know, share your creativity and your healing ability if you feel that you have that as well. Um, and the outcome and also new love, you know, holding out for new love and not just sticking with something that is safe. The outcome is a 10 of pentacles. This is a card of generational wealth. So I've gotten this theme lately with this particular card. I actually got this before. It's like when you follow your heart and then you um, experience something that is very, uh, that is very sustaining that, you know, for instance, the Ace of Cups, I think can also be like a pregnancy, but this is like a dynasty. This is like, you know, generational. So you know, instead of just doing something on the spur of the moment, think about, um, think about the future. Don't just live in the moment. Um, I mean, I'm a Sagittarian. I do that too, living in the moment. But sometimes you have to think about, like, is this choice that I make going to have rever reverberations, you know, years from now? If I, you know, who do I want to start a family with? Who do I, you know, if I work for someone and I'm putting in my energy, is this time going to be rewarded? Or is this just, is this kind of like a, just a, uh, a temporary thing until I can find what I really want? And that's okay too. If it is, it's just that then you're, you, you know, every time that you, get up to go to a job, you're putting in that energy. You know, the energy has to go somewhere. So you want it to go to the place that is most connected to who you are. And that's, you know, when people get into that grind and they're just kind of on automatic almost, 
that creates that sense of, uh, you know, being <laughs> a, a zombie, just kind of going through the motions in life. And Aries people want to feel things. So, you know, really pay attention to your feelings. And this can lead to reward in the material sense, a great reward. This is affluence. And also with love, this can be something where it's like you're looking back years from now and you're thinking about all those years ago when you met that person. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated, Aries. If you would like a personal reading, I'm primarily an astrologer, so I do a lot of astrological chart analysis, uh, analysis and things like that. And looking at transits, I have a combination reading that is at a special value, like extended chart and natal uh, and uh, transits reading called the deep dive reading and other types of readings. You can find out more information at the link below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.